Good morning, I'm Wee Chung from the University of North Carolina and I'm going to be talking about ultrasound of the aorta. I will briefly describe the anatomy of the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta runs from the aortic hiatus to the bifurcation. It has three major anterior branches, the celiac axis at T12, the SMA at L1, the IMA at L2. It has multiple paired branches, of which the most significant are the renal arteries at T2, the gonadal arteries, and there are four paired lumbar arteries. This, these are the gonadal uh, arteries. The celiac artery and the SMA arise from the anterior aspect of the proximal aorta. This is the celiac axis, and this is the SMA. In 1 to 3% of patients, the celiac artery and the SMA arise from a common trunk. This is the common trunk coming off here and giving off the celiac and the SMA from the abdominal aorta. Technique. Measure the aorta and common iliac arteries from the outer diameter in the AP and transverse planes. Doppler tips. Aliasing is a marker of stenosis. The Doppler spectrum should be obtained from the site of aliasing or turbulent flow, in this case from the origin of the celiac axis where uh, an area of aliasing is seen indicating a stenosis at the celiac axis. Elevated velocities are seen within the stenosis and TARDIS pelvis waveforms are seen distal to the stenosis. The normal aorta is larger in the males than in females. It increases with age. At the aortic hiatus, the normal male aorta measures 2.7 centimeters. In females, it measures 2.3 centimeters. At the bifurcation, the aorta measures 2.1 centimeters. In the females, it measures 1.7 centimeters. The normal common iliac artery should be less than 1.5 centimeters in size. This image shows the appropriate way to measure the aorta in the transverse plane. The Doppler waveform of the normal aorta is triphasic with early diastolic reversal of flow. Lower resistance, i.e. more diastolic flow, is seen in the proximal aorta before the takeoff of the renal arteries than in the distal aorta. Peak systolic velocity in the normal aorta is 110 centimeters per second when young. With increasing age, this decreases to 70 to 100 centimeters per second. Risk factors for abdominal aortic aneurysm are hypertension, smoking, family history, age, connective tissue disease, infection, um, and this is called mycotic aneurysm, inflammation, and trauma. Abdominal aortic aneurysms increase in size with time. There is high variability in growth rates. The rate of growth increases as the aneurysm grows. Growth rate is increased in smokers. Abdominal aortic aneurysm has been called the silent killer because it is asymptomatic and can rupture suddenly, resulting in high mortality. Laplace's law describes the relationship between the diameter of the aorta and the pressure on the wall. Essentially, the larger the aneurysm, the greater the pressure on the wall of the aorta and the greater the risk of rupture. Incidence of rupture rises, therefore, with aortic diameter. It is for, di uh, for aortas that are 3 to 5 centimeters in diameter, it is 1% per year. When the aneurysm increases to greater than 5.5 centimeters, it is 10% per year. The rupture rate is increased in active smokers. These are two famous people who died of ruptured aortic aneurysm. On the right is the scientist Albert Einstein. On the left 
is the entertainer Lucille Ball. Abdominal aortic aneurysm screening and surveillance has therefore uh, de been developed in several countries to prevent aortic uh, uh, rupture before the aortic aneurysms get too large. In the United States, uh, this is in the form of the SAVE Act or Stop Abdominal Aortic Aneurysm Very Efficiently. It implements screening for abdominal aortic aneurysm as a Medicare benefit and specifies ultrasound as the screening modality. Every man over 65 and every woman with a family history or every male smoker is entitled to one screening ultrasound exam. Screening has been shown to reduce the mortality of abdominal aortic aneurysm by 21 to 48%. In the United Kingdom, the multicenter aneurysm screening study or mass randomized trial of abdominal aortic screening was carried out. 67,000 men aged 65 to 74 were divided into screening and control groups. In the screen group, there were 224 abdominal aortic aneurysm related deaths while there were 381 abdominal aortic aneurysm related deaths in the control group, resulting in a 42% reduction in abdominal aortic aneurysm related deaths as a result of screening. Overall, the patients in the screen group had a 3% reduction in all deaths. This results in one life saved for every 216 screened patients. Abdominal aortic aneurysm can be managed by surgery or endovascular repair. The mortality rate of elective surgery is 5%, while the mortality of endovascular repair is 2 to 5%. In recent years, endovascular repair has become the treatment of choice. For abdominal aortic aneurysm, when the aneurysm exceeds 5.5 centimeters in diameter, the risk of rupture is greater than the surgical risk and therefore either surgery or endovascular repair is indicated. For smaller aneurysms between 4 and 5.4 centimeters, surgery offers no survival advantage. For aneurysms under 5.5 centimeters, there are medical management that reduce the rate of growth. These include smoking cessation and trials are underway evaluating beta blockers, statins, antiplatelet drugs and ACE inhibitors. Measurements of the abdominal aorta should be obtained in the longitudinal and transverse plane perpendicular to the long axis. Measurements should be performed from the outer wall to the outer wall and the length of the aneurysm should be measured. Additionally, the location of the measurements should be recorded. Most abdominal aortic aneurysms occur inferior to the origin of the renal arteries, but a few occur suprarenal or juxtarenal, and these should be recorded. A diagnosis of abdominal aortic aneurysm is made when the diameter of the aorta exceeds 3 centimeters or increases to 1.5 times greater than that of the adjacent normal aorta. A common iliac artery aneurysm is diagnosed when the diameter exceeds 1.5 centimeters. When an aneurysm has been diagnosed, the policy is to follow up a 3 to 4 centimeter aneurysm annually, a 4 to 4.5 centimeter aneurysm every six months, for aneurysms greater than 5 centimeters, these should be followed up every 3 months if no treatment is planned. Focal ectasia or bulging should be followed every 2 to 3 years. On the left is the wrong way to measure an abdominal aortic aneurysm. The calipers have been placed on the inner or internal surface of the aorta. On the right is the correct way. The measurement caliper has been placed on the outer surface of the aorta and the correct distance is from the outer surface of the aorta here to the outer surface of the aorta here. Measurement technique. Patients should be fasted for 8 to 10 hours. 
a 2.5 megahertz curvilinear transducer should be used. Compression may be applied to eliminate bowel gas. Another useful maneuver to eliminate bowel gas is to place the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. Long axis views of the kidneys should be obtained. Measurements should be obtained from the proximal, mid, and distal aorta. The common iliac arteries should be measured at the bifurcation. For screening purposes, a single transverse measurement will suffice. It is important to obtain the measurements perpendicular to the plane of the vessel. The aorta can be a very tortuous structure. And in this case here, the correct diameter of the aorta on this CT uh, angiogram image, the correct way to measure the diameter of this aorta would be to place the transducer in a slightly oblique orientation because that is perpendicular to the course of the aorta. If the transducer is placed in a true transverse plane, an erroneous measurement will be obtained. This will result in overestimation of the luminal diameter. This slide illustrates a common pitfall. In this case, the inner wall of a thrombus is mistaken for the wall of the aorta. This echogenic line actually represents the surface of a large thrombus that is lining the wall of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. On the transverse view, the crescentic shaped thrombus is better seen. The true position of the aortic wall is marked by the open arrow on the longitudinal image and by the open arrows on the transverse image. And the true diameter of the aneurysm is shown by the position of these calipers. In aneurysms with thrombus, turbulent flow can be seen with Doppler. On this image here, we see an abnormal aortic waveform with turbulent flow and spectral broadening. The color Doppler image shows turbulence, while the thrombus itself is markedly hypoechoic and not well seen on the grayscale portion of the image. Aortic rupture is a surgical emergency. Non-contrasted CT is the preferred modality for detecting aortic rupture, and ultrasound has no place in this situation. However, if ultrasound is performed, a periaortic hematoma or hemoperitoneum may be seen. Dissection of the abdominal aorta is separation of the medial and intimal layers of the aortic wall a dissection within the abdominal aorta results from extension of a thoracic dissection. So nearly all abdominal aortic dissections originate in the thorax. On the illustration here, a dissection is shown where the blood passes through a hole within the intima and into the aortic wall itself, separating out the intima from the medial and serosal layers. This pocket where the blood has passed into the abdominal wall is known as the false lumen. Aortic dissection is associated with abdominal aortic aneurysms, ulcers, hypertension, atheroma, Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos, trauma, and pregnancy. In aortic dissection, the false lumen is usually larger and may be thrombosed. The false lumen shows to and fro flow on spectral Doppler. And it is important when evaluating dissections to evaluate the patency of the branches of the abdominal aorta in that vicinity because the dissection can result in obstruction of these branches. This is an image of an aortic dissection. This longitudinal image demonstrates a linear hyperechogenicity within the lumen of the aorta representing the dissection flap. The false and true lumens are shown, and flow is seen in both the false and true lumens 
in this patient. If Doppler spectra are obtained from the false and true lumens, bizarre spectra may be seen. In this case, there is a dissection flap seen within the abdominal aorta on this transverse image. A spectrum is obtained that is bizarre and has does not resemble any physiologic aortic waveform. In conclusion, ultrasound is the modality of choice for detection and follow-up of abdominal aortic aneurysm. CT is the preferred modality for detection of rupture.